Let me tell you a little story about living conditions. It was the tail end of a particularly bitter winter, and I was invited out to celebrate Nola's birthday, which had, I'm sure, nothing to do with the fact that I was the only one with access to a car willing to be the designated driver. As we're sitting in some dank shithole out on Queen West, my three classmates discussed how the next year they would all be moving in together across from the school. The good times would never end in their as-yet-undetermined future digs. Well, la di fucking da They laughed and cavorted into the night, improving my mood tremendously. I was getting real sick of living at home, 22 years old, in college, single. I wanted a place on my own, or at least with other people like me. So the other Dave says, hey, why don't you move in with us? We could use a fourth roommate. Yeah, Dave, I'm sure my ex-girlfriend can't wait to live with me. Did you even clear this with her? Besides, I just quit my job. I couldn't afford moving out, so I tried not to dwell too much on being left out once again. Now, Radic, my friend in media arts, had just moved downtown. His last semester of school was a mandatory internship, so he and his classmates got a place in the city and would just stay there after graduation. After settling into their new place, the only logical thing to do was throw a party. I showed up on that frozen night with Robin to their place, a bisected three-story job from the 20s out at Girard and Pape, a part of Toronto known primarily for low property value and the shootings that caused it. Their house could be described as a coming-of-age movie director's fever dream, mixed with a kind of shabby decadence that all college kids go full-mast for. Stacked beds of assorted occupancy, haphazard furnishings that were equal parts necessity, hipster savvy, and hand-me-downs, and decor to match. Though since I spent most of the night suppressing my self-pity with rum and weed, the details are a bit hazy. Suffice it to say that everyone had a great time, and I was pretty envious. I yearned to be that cool and focus, and laid back, and outgoing, all at once, a party animal with a solid work ethic. I felt increasingly bitter that I was stuck at home with my family, shackled to my childhood and lonely Saturday nights. I woke up at the crack of early, having passed out under a coffee table, to the frustrated grunts of a girl trying to play Super Mario Bros. 3, and it did not look like she wanted any pointers. I waited for my friends to wake up, feeling like absolute death, and that's when I remembered that that was the day I'd promised to help my cousin move. I made my way across town and found my cousin Kim, who was also an art student, ready with her moving van. We loaded up the truck, drove to my mom's place, and unloaded her shit into the basement three times in a row, with me passing out for an hour in between each time. I was wiped out, and it was just her and me, no roommates or anything helping us. So I ask, is anyone else going to join us? And she says, well, actually, she kind of wants to get this done before anyone gets back. And I think, what the fuck does that mean? Actually, wait a second. I've never been to her place before. Does she even live here? Are we robbing this place? Oh my god, I'm going to go to jail. Well, no, actually, see, my cousin had a roommate whose demeanor had recently taken a turn for the... Totally fucking insane. Slowly, over the years, she'd gotten reclusive and aggressive and started talking to herself and built a cocoon of sorts in her room with heat lamps and shit and at one point responded to my cousin by hissing at her. Kim also had two pet geckos and may have started fearing her roommate might try to breed with them. Mental illness and drugs aren't a joke, kids. Kim knew it'd become some kind of a fiasco over who owned what percentage of the coffee table if we hung around too long, so we loaded everything up and got the fuck out of there. And after all of it, I lay on my bed, exhausted barely able to keep pace after just one night of partying, and I thought, how lucky I was. Maybe I didn't have a super cool pad with all my friends, I didn't strike out on my own, or or have a place with my classmates, but would I even be able to handle that? Would I be lucky enough for it to work out at all? Everyone knows someone who's lost the roommate lottery. What if I ended up with some guy who sold my stuff for drugs, or a landlord who wouldn't pitch in to help spray for bed bugs, or a strung out nut job trying to fuck my gecko? You never know! I had my family and all the comforts of home just a few blocks from school. I'd be crazy to throw that away. And the hangover that I was nursing agreed wholeheartedly. One day I would set out, but for the time being, I would be thankful for all that I had. And I could sleep soundly, knowing that no one would fuck my gecko.